Hello everybody. You've probably seen this machine before if you've seen other videos of mine. This is my Alexander Master Toolmaker Miller machine. It is a vertical Miller machine and a horizontal Miller machine as well. Uh, it's called a universal Miller machine. Now one of the really nice things about this Miller machine is in the vertical head and the horizontal head the part that takes the tooling is a Morse taper number four. Now that's quite a large Morse taper and one of the things it enables you to do is for instance put in a large tool this is a boring head with a number four taper it also has a special thread on up here for the drawbar uh, for this machine and that's a really good tool to have in your arsenal now one of the disadvantages at least for me of having a number four more taper concerns my drilling chuck now my drilling chuck has a number two Morse taper on I could put on a sleeve for number three I have to put another sleeve on for number four now if I put that in the vertical head you can see that, that it comes quite a long way down now one of the disadvantages with the with the Alex is that it's quite small and there's not much distance between the bottom of the vertical head uh, and the table so I can't use this uh, chuck in the milling machine However, all is not lost. At the moment, in that number four Morse taper in the vertical head, I've fitted a collet adapter. Now here's one of the collets, and these are collets which fit this machine. They have a special thread, and that thread uh, goes into the drawbar here. So the uh, collet adapter is in the number four Morse taper. We push the, the collet in, we turn it around until there's a pip in the inside, and the pip has got to engage in this slot. Once it engages in that slot, it then goes up. We can then turn the drawbar, that goes onto that thread, and now we have a collet in the vertical head. If we wanted to do uh, some cutting and put a milling cutter in, we can now put a milling cutter into that uh, collet, and now once it's set up tightly, we can then machine using this collet and you can see that there's a fair bit of room between the table and the bottom of the uh, cutter. So now you may say, hang on a minute, all you've got to do is put in the appropriate collet and then you can put your drill into the collet. And that would be true. Unfortunately, this is my range of collets. So as you can see, it's not uh, an extensive range of collets. All the collets there are imperial. There's no metric collets uh, at all. Now, when you're drilling, you drill with a whole myriad of different sizes of drills, and the chances of getting a set of collets to cover all of those is pretty remote. However, there is a simple way of making a collet to fit a collet to take the drill. So as long as your collet is larger than the drill that you want to use, you can make a smaller collet to fit inside the bigger collet to hold your drill. And that's what I'm going to show you how to make today. Now we're about to make this small collet to fit inside the main collet to take up the gap between the drill that we want to use and the size of collet that we have. Now the the collet that we're going to make it's really a bush or some people call it a split bush or an adapter. You can not only use it for holding drills inside collets but if you have a large collet in the headstock of your lathe and your job is of a size where you haven't got a collet that fits you can make one of these to hold your job inside the collet of your lathe so they do have other purposes as well now it's going to be split once we make it and the reason it needs to be split is because as you use the collet in your lathe or the milling machine as the collet is pulled into the collet adapter it closes up and clamps onto your job now because we're going to fill the gap between the collet and the job, the collet that we make needs to deform as the main collet decreases in, uh, in diameter. And the way we do that is with a slit down the side and we'll be going through that in a moment. Uh, because it has to deform, it needs to be a soft metal. So I normally use brass or aluminium. Uh, there's loads of different types of these collets. Uh, I'm going to show you two types. The first one is the simplest one. Uh, and as I said, it's a turning job. So, uh, well, let's get on with it. We place our half inch bar into the collet with the lathe, tighten up the collet like that. And now face this end. A 
I've now placed the parting off tool in the lathe. We're going to undo the collet, pull our job out to round about there. I now want to machine off a piece of this bar 25 millimeters from this face down here. Now the way that I'm going to measure that is with the compound slide. Now when you're doing this you've got to be careful of backlash. So what I'm going to do I'm turning the compound slide anti-clockwise now until it goes back and it's now hit the stop. I'm now going to turn it clockwise a couple of turns so that means that the the backlash has been taken up as long as I rotate the compound wheel clockwise which will move the tool towards the headstock. Now I can still move the tool backwards and forwards using the saddle wheel. So what I'm going to do is use the saddle wheel, bring the tool back past the front face of our job. Now what I want is this face of the parting off tool to be level with that face of the job. Now the way that I'm going to do that is by holding this rule against this face of the job and pushing it down on top of the parting off tool. Then using the wheel of the saddle I'm going to move the parting off tool towards the head. As the parting off tool lit, this piece here right on the corner passes that face then the rule will click down and I know that I'm level with that face. So I'm pushing down on top of the tool, I'm moving it backwards slowly towards the headstock and almost there, there. That's it, just there. So I now know that this face of the parting off tool is level with that face of our job. I also know that the compound slide here, all the backlash has been taken up because I've moved the wheel in a clockwise direction and I'm now going to carry on moving the wheel in a clockwise direction and looking at the measuring wheel on the wheel itself and, and move the compound slide exactly 25 millimeters. So here we go. Coming up to 25 just there. So that's 25 millimeters. We can do a quick check by holding our rule against the edge of the parting off tool and measuring to the face of the job, 25 millimeters. Right, we can now start up the motor and cut this piece off. I've collected the piece that's parted off and placed that in the lathe collet. The parting off tool has been replaced with a tip cutting tool and it's now time to face the end of the job and remove the pit left by the parting off tool. Last thing to do in this operation is remove the sharp edge of the job with a file. We're drilling now and start with the centre drill. The split bush we're making here is to hold a 6.8mm drill. To make sure the bush is drilled to the correct size, we'll use the drill we need the bush to hold. This hole is drilled right through the bush. And that is our hole drilled all the way through. We just need to deburr each end of the hole. Make sure it's nice and flat, which it is. So that is our bush drilled all the way through. We now have to make it into a split bush. So the next thing to do is the split. Here is our drilled bush and we now need to split the bush from one side uh, to the other lengthways so it becomes like a C shape. Now I'm going to do that with an axle but I want to follow a line so the first thing I've done is put some ink on this side. I'm now going to put it into this little angle piece that I have here. This is a ground, a ground piece of angle and what it enables you to do is if I hold it there in the corner I can now run along this edge like that and produce a nice straight line. Now here is a bush that I've finished already and you can see where the split is. It runs along one side and it goes through the wall just here making a sort of C shape. Now that's what we want to do on, on our bush we've just made. Now that means that we've got to be able to get the blade from the top surface here to the inside of the hole. Now 
the the new bush that we have here you can see that I've held it within the jaws with two pieces of wood now the reason I've done that is because it's aluminium it's quite soft and if I hold it on the hard jaws of the vise then it's liable to to damage the ends and because our bush is going inside a collet and it's all fairly close tolerance we don't really want to damage the end or bend it at all so by putting it between two pieces of wood it prevents any damage to the end of the bush now another nice thing about having your job between two pieces of wood is when you start the cut I can put the uh, blade down here I'm now looking from above and I've got an eye each side of the blade and I'm going to be cutting it actually on top of the line here that I've scratched on the side so I can line it up from above get it in the right position and now start the cut here and now I can also look at this end and start the cut there as well so we haven't touched the job just yet but as we come down through the wood you can see how close you are and we are pretty close there and now I can you hear you can hear it just starting to to touch the job and now I can go into the job and start cutting and this should produce a nice straight line let's just have a, a little look here I'll take a photograph a nice close-up the wood each end of the bush supports the axle blade as you can see the cut is nice and straight and we're about halfway through the wall of the bush and now back to the sawing and we're through one other nice thing about cutting into the wood as 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 the blade breaks through into the hole underneath it doesn't allow the blade to bang on the hard jaws of the vise so it protects your blade as well and now we're cut all the way through let's have a closer look and out it comes from the vise and there's our split collet right let's see if our pieces assemble nicely we have our new split bush here this is the 6.8 millimeter drill and that fits into the split bush quite nicely we have the collet just here and our bar fits nicely into the collet so there it is we have our drill our split bush and the collet I've now fitted the collet into the vertical head of the miller machine we have our split collet here and our drill now the drill fits nicely into our split collet now one may ask the split in the collet should it line up with the split in our bush or should you have it such that the split in the bush is away from the split in the collet well to tell you the truth I don't know if there's a scientific answer to that I've tried it in both positions wondering if there was any difference and I can't find any so I don't think it's uh, important where this split is in relation to the splits on your collet so we will push the split collet into the collet I will now get a spanner and do up our draw bar that's the collet tightened up if I now spin the milling machine round you can see that we are bang in the middle there's no wobble on that drill at all so that split collet is a good one so we've now made our basic split bush now then imagine that the collet is in the milling machine uh, vertical head so it's pointing down like this now when we insert the drill we'll be inserting the drill from underneath and the split bush will go in like this if we now take the drill out or try and reposition it then this sometimes happens where the split bush will go further inside the collet now it's really difficult to get back sometimes it'll pop in so far you just can't get it out and what you have to do in that point is undo the draw bar pull the collet down then tap it and uh, get our split bush out the bottom now it is a rather annoying feature of this but there is a slight modification you can do to the bush which stops that happening 
and the modification is when we make our split bush we made this split bush out of a half inch aluminium uh, bar because it fitted nicely into the collet well if we'd use a slightly thicker bar we can turn down the end of the bar to suit the collet and leave a lip at this end and what that means is you can push it in but it can't go inside the collet anymore so the feature that we had on our first one doesn't exist on here and then the drill can go simply into the collet do the draw bar up this collet will clamp down onto that uh, split bush split bush will clamp down onto the drill and this works really well well that's about all I've got for you today if you have any ideas on something perhaps I missed or you've got a better idea of doing these collets if you could let me know in the comments and then perhaps I can cover those later on also you, anyone's ideas on whether the split in the split collet should line up with the split in the uh, the major collet it'd be interesting to know what other people think about that could you do something like this of course you can and with that this video is at an end take care everybody and i'll see you next time Could you do something like this? Of course you can.